Hello and welcome back to Toy Thursday with Johnny Tiger on January 13, 2022. Welcome back. We are here to continue the grandpa that throws down. Um, I don't even remember what episode this is. It's like episode 6, 5 or 6, something like that. And of course, we have another uh, grandfatherly figure this week, figure and character that I'm going to delve into its construction, its history, uh, and why it, he, why he classifies, why he qualifies to be one of our super badass, super hardcore grandpas that will make the list. In front of the camera, you're seeing the backside <laughs> of a very scrawny looking character. And this is none other than our special guest of the day. His name is Adrian Toom. And now that he's turned around, we can see that he indeed looks like a skinny and very evil looking old geezer. <laughs> Just look at that. He has a sinister smile on his lips, a bald head with liver spots on his head, big gray eyebrow and piercing looking eyes. I mean, that is one sinister looking old guy. It's definitely not going to be one of the heroes, I can tell you that. So who is this guy? Who is this guy? He's wearing some kind of skin tight green costume with a white furry feathery collar around his neck and like i already mentioned he got bald head uh and a very sinister looking face and he's very scrawny now, who is he young adrian toon grew up uh, pretty much an orphan being taken care of by his brother Later, his brother became paraplegic due to an accident, and Adrian uh, took over taking care of his brother in return. After he finished school, Adrian was proven to be a genius uh, in engineering and uh, inventing things. So he started a small electrical engineering firm with a partner. During his earlier years, he devoted a lot of his time taking care of his brother while working on a prototype of a specialized suit uh, and harness that would allow a person to fly using electromagnetic field. However, uh, he pretty soon realized that his partner was embezzling from the company. So one day, Adrian went to the office and confronted his partner about uh, the, the uh, uh, behavior. Uh, needless to say, the confrontation went a little bit sour and they came to blow. And that's when Adrian first realized that his exposure to this prototype fly suit gave him some kind of superhuman strength. Unfortunately for him, uh, super strength or not, his partner was able to use this opportunity to sue him for attacking him in the office and ended up uh, uh, taking over the entire company and uh, Adrian lost everything. Feeling kind of disillusioned about the world, Adrian retired and worked in secrecy on finishing this prototype suit. One day when he heard that his uh, former partner is going to sell their electrical engineering firm to someone else, Adrian, in a fit of rage, put on the now finished electromagnetic suit that he called the voucher suit and went, broke into the office, stole all the money that used to belong to him back from his partner. This, we can say, was a 
uh, beginning of a long road of crime and darkness for the formerly bright and very unremarkable Adrian Toome. Realizing that with his new and patented technology, with his electromagnetic suit, with his vulture suit, he can do a lot more than just sit in the dingy office and try to come up with blueprints all day long. Adrian committed himself to a life of crime, calling himself the Vulture. He committed several very high-profile robberies, uh, robbed a lot of money, a lot of banks, a lot, uh, took away a shipment, shipment of diamonds, before finally running into the Spider-Man, and that's when he met his first defeat, when Spider-Man was able to disable his flying suit uh, with an anti-magnetic device. However, this was not enough to keep the Vulture down. Pretty soon, he escaped from jail and perfected the technology in his suit. So the next time he and Spider-Man fought, Spider-Man was unable to disable his suit. And as a result, Spider-Man almost fell to death, ended up breaking his arm in the fall and allowing the Vulture to get away. It wasn't until a few more run in before the uh, Vulture was finally captured again by Spider-Man. While being incarcerated for the second time, Adrian Toome became a cellmate with a guy named uh, Blackie Drago. Now, Blackie Drago knew that Adrian Toome had this amazing flying suit that he used when he uh, was a criminal. So while they were in jail together, Blackie Drago kept trying to pry the secret of the suit out of Adrian. Finally, one day, during uh, their uh, work experience in the machine shop, Drago arranged a very deadly accident for Adrian, seriously injuring him. While Adrian was on his deathbed, Drago was finally able to pry the secret of the vulture suit out of uh, the, his cellmate. Pretty soon after, Drago escaped from jail stole the Vulture suit and became the second Vulture. Drago's stint as the second Vulture did not last long, however, uh, he was defeated handily by Spider-Man uh, very soon after he became the second Vulture. To everybody's surprise, the fatally wounded Adrian, remember the accident in the machine shop, uh, ended up making a full recovery, and broke out of jail himself. After that, he constructed a second vulture suit, and then challenged Blackie Drago to a vulture-to-vulture -vulture combat to decide who is a real and only vulture once and for all. Despite Drago was younger, stronger, and had the original suit, Adrian defeated him uh, rather easily. Becoming the one and only Vulture once more, Adrian went on a crime spree that ended with him becoming the top dog in New York, the baddest, uh, the highest ranking crime boss in New York. Unfortunately for poor Adrian, very soon after that he was diagnosed with cancer, and during his cancer recovery he befriended a, a paraplegic man who did not know Adrian's uh, identity as the Vulture. This man soon became Adrian's best friend, and it's because this man's influence and encouraging word that Adrian was continue was able to continuously uh, do his Vulture thing despite of uh, suffering from cancer. Sadly, their friendship did not end in a good way. One day during the battle between the Spider-Man and the Vulture, uh, the Vulture's best friend, this paraplegic man, got caught up in the conflict, uh, not knowing that Vulture was actually his good friend, Adrian Toom. And Adrian Toom uh, was too involved with the battle to realize that his best friend was uh, getting caught up in the conflict. And the paraplegic 
men actually ended up dying uh, in the end of that battle, and Asian Tomb suffered a great bout of depression after that because he he was responsible for the death of his best friend, the person who encouraged him and helped him uh, deal with his cancer. Soon after, Adrian's luck seemed to take a turn for the better, when during one battle against a bunch of alien programmed uh, robots, uh, one of the robot's energy infused into Adrian. This had two effects on the old man. One, it cured him of his cancer, and two, it turned him back into a young man. However, Adrian did not take this chance, this new leaf on life, to become a better person. Instead, he took this chance to go on a killing spree, trying to murder everyone who knew him when he was an old man. He figured that if he killed off everybody who knew about his secret identity, then he could have a clean slate and clean start. And maybe it's karma punishing him because during one of these attempted murders, he fought a guy who had the superpower to, well, negate any effect on people. So yes, you guessed it. The negation effect hit the voucher and the vulture turned back into an old man with cancer. Sometime later, uh, during one battle uh, against the Spider-Man, the vulture actually got the upper hand on Spider-Man and was about to kill Spider-Man when he suddenly passed out. After rushing him to the hospital, they uh, found out that he had a stroke and half of his body, the one side of his body, was completely paralyzed. And even that did not keep the vulture down. Pretty soon he was back on the street using his anti-gravity electromagnetic vulture suit to try to get back to the top of the criminal underworld. At this time in his life, the vulture ran into a series of really bad and cruel encounters. First he was captured by uh, Craven the Hunter, another uh, supervillain whose whole thing was about uh, killing and hunting worthwhile prey, aka worthwhile people. Uh, Draven the, uh, Craven the Hunter was arranging uh, an event he called a Great Hunt, where he would capture all the supervillains, superheroes that had an animal seen to them, such as the vulture, the white rabbit, the rhino, the armadillo, uh, all the animal seemed superhuman. Uh, Craven the hunter would capture them and use them to uh, be hunted by people who was rich enough to pay him so they could hunt down these animal superhuman, uh, superhero and supervillain. During his captivity, at the very beginning of the Great Hunt, the Vulture was able to uh, put together a resistance. He became the leader of the counter hunt, and he led all the animal superhuman, superhero, supervillain in a great rebellion and saved everybody. Later, Craven's son, Al Craven, uh, tried to do the same thing again. This time, he wanted to capture all these animal seemed supervillain and superheroes and put them in a zoo and charge people money to come uh, uh, look at them. Wanting to avoid making the same mistake that his dad did, uh, Craven Jr., Al Craven, uh, after capturing the vulture, repeatedly broke the vulture's hand uh, so he would be disabled and unable to escape. Despite that, the vulture escaped again and saved everybody uh, from the very unusual zoo. He also had a brief stint uh, working as a superhero, but that did not last long. Maybe we can say that the vulture, uh, Adrian Toome, was never meant to be a decent, upstanding citizen. Now let's look at 
uh, the figure itself. I was so excited when I first got this uh, voucher action figure in my hand. He was made by Hasbro, and I believe he was released about three years ago, maybe two years ago. Um, why I, why was I so so excited? Because even though I don't really personally like the voucher as a character, uh, he's not really all that uh, big of a deal, and his design doesn't really catch my fancy. Uh, but I remember the voucher from 1994 when I had the first voucher action figure back then made by Toy Biz. Uh, I didn't know much about Spider-Man back then, but I could definitely appreciate all the interesting villains and uh, designs in the Spider-Man comic book. Uh, so when I had the first voucher, uh, that was pretty cool. I mean, this was a you know a, an old guy who was wearing a suit that allowed him to fly. That was totally cool. Um, so running to this action figure now was like running to that guy who you've known when you were a child, when you when you were uh, a teenager. Maybe not a guy that you particularly liked, not a guy that you hung out with, but you know a guy that you had some memory. With maybe a guy that you play uh, basketball with, basketball with sometimes, maybe a guy that you run into in the school cafeteria and exchange a few words. It's that kind of a feeling. That hey, I know this guy. That's so cool. Uh, that kind of uh, excitement. Now, of course, this voucher is drastically like miles better than the old uh, voucher from. 1994, but that's to be expected. After all, it is almost a, it is over 20 years uh, more modern in construction. It is built on a very slender, lanky body, uh, mostly reused, uh, with uh, uh, the arm being new uh, body parts. The head, of course, totally Adrian Tomb, bald head, big eyebrow sinister smile um, but for the most part the body is very boring it is a generic skinny although still quite muscular uh, superhero body or super villain in his case uh, most of the costume details are just painted on the vertical lines the green the lighter shade of green on his uh, arms and legs, those are all painted on. On the old toy back in 1994, all those outfit details were sculpted. And so that's one thing where the old toy had on the new toy. The new toy is mostly just painted details. Uh, however, when it comes to articulation, uh, the new toy had the old one beat by miles. I remember the old toy uh, only could move its shoulders and wings and maybe hips and knees and head. So the new one uh, can move, well, pretty much anything you want him to do. Uh, from the beginning of the uh, this episode, I have been changing out his poses. So those of you that can see have already seen how articulated this guy is, even comparing to a lot of the modern action figure. He is so flexible, he can do a full squat, he can uh, hug himself, he can give himself a uh, cross-armed hug, he can put his hand behind his neck to stretch, he can stand on one leg. This guy is just so well articulated, it's amazing. But just articulation alone, it wouldn't make him a very good action figure of the vulture, of course, because um, you know, it's a voucher. He needs to have more. And we are lucky that he does have more. First off, he wouldn't be the voucher without his wings. So luckily he does. And these wings are quite amazing. Rather than the whole one-piece construction that was glued to his back, like the figure back in 1994, this vulture's wing, you have to assemble yourself out of the package. It comes in four pieces, two small pieces plugged into his upper arm, 
and the larger pieces plug into his forearm. And even with the wings on, he balances really, really well. Um, having these wings definitely give him a very distinctive, um, very impressive profile as well. The wings uh, not only allow the vulture to fly and glide, well, in the story they do, I mean, here, if you try to uh, make him fly, he'll just do a very graceful fall and end up breaking all the wing pieces off of him. Uh, but in the story, the wings allow him to fly and glide, but there's more than that. The feathers on these wings are razor sharp, they're like swords in the story. Uh, so the vulture often uses his wings in combat to slash and dismember his enemies with. So these wings are not just transportation, these wings are deadly weapons of war. The really amazing part of this action figure is the wings do not hinder his arm movement like they did on the old 1994 action figure. On this figure, even with the wings attached, he can bend his arm, he can flap his arm, he can lift his arm, he can get into all kinds of poses. I mean, of course, there are some poses where the wing feathers are so long that they're going to kind of uh, uh, sort of uh, interfere with his ability to stand, but those are far and few in between. You can see here that even at rest, uh, crouching uh, down and squatting on his haunches, he, uh, with his arms down by his side, the wings don't off balance him. The wings actually uh, present a very nice profile for him in this case. Um, I will go as far as saying that as far as handling this action figure goes, he falls into that very distinct category of action figure that we often call hand candy. When you guys know what eye candies are, it's the thing that just really, really good to look at. Well, in action figures, there are action figures that are classified as hand candy. And uh, these action figures are just such joy to maneuver and get into different poses that uh, a person can sometimes just sit here and lose track of time and just fiddle with them all day long. Uh, so the voucher here is one such action figure. It's immensely poseable and uh, all the joints work flawlessly. His balance is perfect and even with his wing, uh, there's not going to be a lot of problem with him. Now, the vulture also comes with yet another accessory that pushes him uh, from just being really good to being great. In addition to the bald visage of Adrian Toome, uh, we have a secondary head we can put on the vulture that turn him into uh, the second vulture, which was Blackie Drago, after he stole Adrian Toome's original vulture suit. Uh, this second vulture uh, visage is wearing a pointed helmet, uh, so it has a definitely very distinct look to it. Here he is, the second vulture. All it takes is a quick head swap. Uh, now, there is some problem with this particular head because technically Blackie Drago is supposed to be a lot younger than Adrian Toon. So the visage under the helmet should look a lot younger. Uh, and I think Hasbro kind of messed up here because they uh, still gave him an old man's face under the helmet. Uh, but it's a minor quibble. Uh, it's definitely appreciated that he come with this particular version. So if anyone was of a mind to, you can actually buy two of this action figure to have that uh, very iconic moment where Adrian Toome decided to challenge Blackie Drago in the battle of the vultures to decide who is a better vulture once and for all. In the end, even though we may not 
agree with Walter or Adrian's、uh, method of conducting himself. After all, he is、uh, a criminal and a very bad one for that. But there are a lot of things about Adrian that definitely qualifies him to be a grandpa that throws down. He is one of the older super villains that is、uh, not a millionaire. He he's not. He doesn't have a lot of money like Craven or、uh, or like Batman. He doesn't have superhuman ability like Superman or Spider Man.、Uh, he had to rely on his own intelligence and his less than stellar body. You know, he doesn't have a super muscular physique. He's a scrawny old guy. Uh, and on top of that, he managed to invent a suit that can be used for flight, for battle, and it even gives him super strength. While he's wearing his suit, his flight suit, he can lift up to about seven hundred pounds, which is not that much comparing、uh, to the kind of enemy he faces up against. But still, any little bit helps. In addition to that, to his humble beginning. Uh, lacking money, lacking any kind of superhuman attribute,、uh, the vulture has overcome almost everything life could throw at him. He was put in jail multiple times. Every time he was able to escape, and while he was in jail, he was fatally wounded、uh, by the accident arranged by his cellmate. He recovered from that and then went out,、uh, got out of jail, and challenged his cellmate on the During the battle of vultures, to decide who was the better vulture of the two of them, and he beat his younger and stronger、uh, cellmate, Blacky Drago, even though Blacky Drago was wearing the original vulture suit. And then he managed to become the top uh, criminal uh, crime lord in New York, which was not an easy feat. We are cons-、uh, considering we are talking about. Comic book、uh, criminals, where there's a lot of scary people in there,、um, and then he survived having cancer, and even when he had a stroke that paralyzed part,、uh, half of his body, he went on just chugging along,、uh, flapping along, being the vulture.、Uh, he was captured and tortured and uh, uh, imprisoned twice. By、uh, first the Craven the Senior, the Craven the Hunter, second time by Craven's son, and both times he was able to escape, even、uh, in spite of Craven's son breaking his hand multiple times. So he was、uh, effectively disabled. And there's more than that. During his、uh, long career as a criminal mastermind, the Vulture has multiple times been able to、uh, put himself in the leadership role. Commanding some of the biggest and baddest villains in Marvel universe, such as the Juggernaut, Jug- Juggernaut, and Rhino, and Armadillo, and uh, 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 Sandman. Uh, I mean, a lot of these guys not really known to be very smart to begin with. However, when you look at their power level, any of these guys can break the Vulture with just a pinky finger alone. And yet, the vulture was able to get them to follow his lead, which means he is not just a guy who、uh, has a fancy、uh, flying suit. He is a guy who definitely has a brain and some、uh, tremendous leadership skill. So,、uh, no matter how we slice it, the vulture definitely qualifies、uh, to be on our grandpa's that throw down episode. I hope you guys enjoy this. A little introduction of this old and sinister character, and we'll be back again tomorrow for Fitness Friday with Johnny Tiger.